Hi everyone, I'm Peter Slovak and I'm really very glad to be able to present this Tukai paper on behalf of all of my fantastic colleagues across King's College London, Simon Fraser University, Stanford and US Santa Cruz. So we've written this paper to help us as HI designers and researchers to really make sense of this emerging space of digitally supported emotion regulation, which is an area that's driven both by um, the increasing technological innovation, as well as our emergent understanding of the importance of constructive emotion regulation for mental health. In other words, um, our goal in writing this systematic review or research agenda piece was to really get together researchers across both of these areas, design and psychology, to systematize and guide this um, increasing and exciting work in this space. So what did we aim to do? We focused on synthesizing the existing literature in ways that would give HCI designers practical tools to make it easier to do what we do best, so exciting innovation, while also being grounded in evidence-based practice and the extensive literature on emotion regulation and psychology, so that our systems could have the psychological effects that we would like them to have without us having to become psychologists to do that. So the resulting three-step framework is supposed to help designers go through um, the decisions about psychological processes that would drive the digitally mediated intervention. So what do we need to do to actually help people feel better? The questions around how, when and where we could or should design for providing support to our users so that these psychological processes are really well supported. So when we decide we want to support something, how do we do this and how can we support it? And finally, to really help systematize and outline what has been done already so far, so that we as designers can build on and learn from the interaction design approaches that have or have not worked before. So let's have a look at this framework in more detail. The first theoretical layer aims to help the designers make theory-informed decisions about intervention targets from psychology, that is, the what of the emotion regulation intervention goals that our design systems could aim to impact. In particular, the paper starts by summarizing the most commonly used psychological model of emotion regulation and highlights how its individual categories can then drive our own designs. The second strategic layer is then positioned to help the designers make key strategic decisions about the intervention delivery mechanisms that should be included in their systems. That is the hows and whens and wheres can um, interaction design play a role in the intervention process? This is the layer that we'll talk more about in the rest of the talk. And finally, the third practical layer is based on an in-depth systematic review of all digitally supported emotion regulation work to date, as published in ACM, and aims to support decisions around the commonly used design components that represent specific implementations of selected ways to deliver, in deliver interventions. And what that means is that we're trying to enable drawing on and extending the current best design practice as identified across HCI work so far. So in the rest of the talk, I wanted to mostly talk about the middle layer, as that is the one closest to high-level decisions that we as designers might make. Specifically, our goal here was to really encourage HCI designers to think about the key choices about how, when and where the intervention is supported or delivered and to do so in the context of the role that this is supposed to play in the intervention process rather than any specific technologies that are to be used. So in other words, in contrast to many other HCI frameworks, this is a user experience centric rather than a technology centric approach, which aims to highlight the user's mental trajectory that happens during the intervention and that also leads to the psychological effects. So the centerpiece of the strategic layer is the differentiation between the type of skill acquisition approach that your intervention supports, does it have predominantly didactic or experiential components, and the timing and context in which you as a designer choose to support your users, that is, do you provide ongoing support as and when your users need to regulate their emotions in their everyday life, or are you relying on specific training contexts where emotion regulation can be trained? But this is all very high level and theoretical, so let's get a bit closer to specific examples of what these dimensions mean. So let's start by looking at the hows, that is, the thinking about the learning sciences approach that would be helpful to support your audience, your participants, in developing the target emotion regulation skills. 
The, f the experiential components of your intervention will focus on mediating the first-hand experience of applying a specific emotion regulation strategy without necessarily providing a verbal description of the actions to be done. So in the work so far, for example, this will involve things like biofeedback that provides an ongoing real-time feedback on the application of specific uh, strategy, or perhaps by guiding the person through an experience, such as a therapist might do um, when they're supporting a client during an exposure therapy exercise. In contrast, the didactic components focus on the delivery of information and supporting its very conscious application, even if it is not immediately done within the targeted social-emotional context. And this might traditionally focus on reminders or just giving cognitive explanations of emotion regulation strategies that then aim to build participants' cognitive understanding of how, why and where and when specific strategies can be used. So the other really important aspect is that of timing and the context in which you as a designer choose to support your users, so the whens and the wheres. In this case, the offline components um, aim to support development of emotion regulation strategies in deliberate training contexts rather than in daily life. And the important distinction is that the trained skills are then expected to be transferred into everyday situations where strong emotions naturally arise, but potentially without any additional support. In contrast, the on-the-spot components aim to train emotion regulation strategies during the naturally occurring emotional situations, for example, stressful event in daily life. What this means is that the skills are practiced immediately and applied to a specific emotion and are mediated by technological or in-person intervention. And what is crucial here, no further transfer of skills is expected or needed. However, it might be hard to do so practically without affecting the core situation that people are facing. If we now emerge back to the notion of the whole framework, the obvious question is, you know, great, you've created a bunch of buckets that I as a designer might or might not care about, but how do I actually practically use this thing? What can it do for me? So there are two things we're hoping it can do. The first, individually, it can help us as a community identify gaps in existing HCI literature and then build on each other's work across technical platforms, as well as suggest plausible directions to investigate. For example, the existing interventions are currently surprisingly clustered around pre-existing technology directions such as biofeedback game or false heart rate feedback and are ignoring a number of other really important directions as we're talking about in the paper. Finally, on the specific study level, we're hoping that the framework can support the team across a number of components and sharpen the research questions, for example, in terms of specific gaps or the emotion regulation um, targets, while also enabling the PI to reuse and appropriate helpful techniques from across the field. So with this, I hope that I've given you at least a bit of an idea of what's in this paper and also why is it so terribly long. As you might notice, the paper itself kind of starts with a seven page summary. So our hope is that people might start with that, read those seven pages, and then be oriented towards individual sections, not all of which have to be read at the same time, as and when you really need to delve deeper into the individual topics. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear about the work that people are doing. We're, tr we're going to be trying to keep a database of everything that's happening in, um, in this field, so all the papers we can find that will be updating every three to six months. So um, have a look, the link is in the paper, and um, we look forward to hearing from you and working in this area together. All right.